We're good to go. The regular meeting of the North Smithfield Town Council, November 16, 2020, is called to order at 6 45 p.m. First item is the prayer and pledge, Madam Clerk. Lord, assist with thy Holy Spirit of counsel all of those who are serving in positions of authority and responsibility. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mrs. Bartomioli? Here. Mrs. O'Hara? Here. Mr. Ogier? Here. Mr. Zolinski? Present. Mr. Vadenay? Here. Next item is open forum pursuant to public law 42-46-6D with maximum of 15 minutes. Is there anyone out there wishing to speak under the open forum? Mm -hmm. um, Jeff Porter has his hand raised. Um, I do not see anyone else as of this moment. Mr. Porter, you'd like to speak in the open forum? Uh, yes, please. Uh, Jeff Porter, Six Country Way, um, member of the planning board. Um, I just wanted to touch base on the memo that you guys will be uh, receiving tonight. Um, I do plan on being here for, for that portion of the meeting, but I just want to uh, underscore that we are indeed um, extending a request that we host the public meetings for the, um, that's, that's listed in the Hallowell RFP for the time being until um, such a committee may, may be formed by uh, council tonight or the future council. Um, we want to make sure that uh, we, we uh, step off on the right foot for the project. And um, again, just want to extend our uh, invitation to host the uh, public meetings at the planning board. Thank you. And anyone else? No. Mr. Edelson. Members of the council uh, and all who are online, I just Sorry, okay. um, the, uh, in my newsletter this week, which I suspect will be the last newsletter that I, I produced. Yeah, can I just? Yeah, I um, that uh, I'll enumerate more detail, in more detail the work that we've done together. And it isn't, I want to emphasize, it isn't my work, it isn't your work. It's our work as a community, and I think each of you should take pride in the accomplishments that we, um, we have made. Um, we've accomplished uh, some financial security, certainly. We've improved our, uh, our staff in terms of talent that's present to um, serve the town. Uh, at the same time, we've also invested in equipment, bought land. Uh, we've done so many things together that, uh, again, I just want to say thank you to each of you and my family for the time that they allowed me to be able to um, be present as, as the administrator. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else now, Claire? Um. Do not see anyone else. 
last call for the open forum for anyone listening out there. No hands up. No hands up. Okay. Thank you. Next item is executive session discussion by council board of their action on Rhode Island General Law 42 46 5 A2. Sessions pertaining to collective bargaining or litigation or work sessions pertaining to collective bargaining or litigation. One, Pine Healthcare Services Landmark LLC and Pine Healthcare Services Landmark MOB LLC versus Sarah Proof in her capacity as tax assessor of the town of Smithfield. We're out case number PC 2018 5702. Number two, Pine Healthcare Services Landmark LLC and Pine Healthcare Services Landmark MOB LLC. Versus Michelle Mariani in her capacity as tax assessor of the town of Westfield. We're having case number PC 2019-10662. Prime Health Care number three, Prime Healthcare Services Landmark LLC and Prime Healthcare Services Landmark MOB LLC versus Michelle Mariani in her capacity as tax assessor of the town of Westfield. We're having case number PC 2020-0095. And number four, Prime Healthcare Services Landmark LLC and Prime Healthcare Services Landmark MOB LLC, President Michelle Mariani, in her capacity as tax assessor of the town of Rosa Ferrara, case number PC 2020 Motion to recess in the executive session. Motion by Mrs. Walensky, is there a second? Second by Mrs. O'Hara. Roll we'll call vote. We'll... Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelensky? Yes. Mr. Van Nuyen? Yes. Okay. Okay. Put the Ready to proceed whenever you are. Mm -hmm. Council is back in open session. At this time, I will entertain a motion to seal the minutes of the executive session and let the record show that one vote was taken. So moved, Mr. President. Motion by Mrs. Zelensky. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Ogier. Roll call vote. Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelensky? Yes. Mr. Vanney? Yes. Next slide on Smithfield Town Council sitting as the Board of License Commissioners. A discussion by Council Voter Other Action on new mobile food truck license for RP Winkleton Inc. doing business as Sunnyside on the street. And one discussion by Council Voter Other Action on annual license. You have all the paperwork in front of you. Um, I've been signed off by the building inspector. I have the ACI checked by the police department. Uh, by department has approved, and the tax collector has approved. Is there a motion to approve the license? Mm -hmm. Motion by Mrs. Bonnelli, second by Mrs. O'Hara. Any discussion? Yeah, discussion, Mr. President. I know that uh, our ordinance requires a uh, 90 new start. I'd just like to see if we can uh, try to change some of the latitude here. This is going to be a breakfast truck. And by 9 a.m., the breakfast is pretty much over. So, uh, I mean, I know people eat breakfast all day long. I just wondered if the council would consider um, extend, excuse me, uh, releasing it from 9 a.m. to say somewhere around 6 or 7 a.m. so more business could be conducted and we'd get more meals back. Maybe if we were going to change the ordinance, we would have to do that as a first reading, I, second reading to change no. the ordinance. Can I, I think the deal. Can I yeah. per the ordinance, I've actually read it over and over. Um, per the ordinance, it's for the town council's discretion oh. of changing the hours oh. because normal business hours in town are 6 a.m. to midnight mm -hmm. with the mobile food truck being 9 a.m. to dusk. So it's up to your discretion whether you want to so extend that. Yes. Yeah, so that's, that's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> I know that's that's 
Uh, is the owner online? Yeah. He is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mr. Sola, do you have any comments that you would like to make on the discussion? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, if you guys can go earlier, that'd be great. But um, I can I can live with the ordinance if it is. Um, looking at the ordinance as a whole, um, it's a, I mean, generally what most towns do is they have um, they have areas of exclusion, right? So in their ordinance, it would be like no residential, you can only be in commercial, you can't be within so many feet of brick and mortars, um, but you would follow the same operating, uh, operating hours as brick and mortar. Um, the reason being the where they tend to, uh, tend to uh, stay out of residential is because the generators on the truck with a, you know, you'll get a special use or whatever for a private event. So I like just looking at the ordinance, the ordinance seems cumbersome, but I can fit in the ordinance. Um, but obviously if I could go earlier, that'd be great, but that's up to you guys. Thank you. Uh, Chapter 11, the very last section. All the way to the end. But according to how it's read, it could be 6 o'clock. Can we go early? That's a mystery we have question. Okay, we'll. How the town operates regular business hours of six to midnight, six a.m. to midnight. And so we can we can make this fit into the regular business hours. If we I want to go differently, then we have to have a here in the public hearing. Oh, yeah. Okay. But I, I'm going to say, that I'm going to make a motion. That I think he, he seems to want six o'clock. So yeah. Yeah. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'd like to make a motion that Scotty. Well, we have we have a motion. We already have a motion. Oh, in, in, in a second, to, to give the license now. All right, all right, the discussion, the discussion, we're going to change the hours. Okay. So we have to go back to the main maker in a second to see if they would amend it to be a six a.m. Which one? So the main No, the two ladies. So are you Mrs. No, Mrs. Varnamioli and Mrs. O'Hara. I'd like to change or withdraw my motion. Do you? Main, the main maker withdraws. The second withdraw. Second okay. 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 I would like to make a motion to approve the license with. We're not really extending. We're just going to offer that 6 a.m. is a starting time for business. I second that motion. Six to nine. No, from no. from nine to six o'clock. So it's he'll operate from, from six, six in the morning. He, I guess he can operate any any hour after that until right? nine. We're allowing him to six operate at six until nine. Nine as opposed to nine because nine, nine o'clock is normal hours for a, for a food truck. It, on discretion, we can change that. Obviously, a breakfast truck gets on the side of the clock. Correct. So, um, and this is our first food truck though. It is. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. We're learning. <laughs> So that there is a motion in a second to approve a mobile food truck license for RP Winkleton, including business at Sunnyside on the street for the starting time of 6 a.m. Any further discussion? No call vote. Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelinsky? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. Good luck, Mr. Sully. Sell lots of breakfast. Number two. Discussion by council voter on action on the following locations. Dave, we have that on these individually or can you act on them collectively? Uh, just looking at it, you could act on them collectively unless, you, unless you're unless you going to make some special amendment to it. Are you going to make any special amendment to them? If you're not, you can act on them collectively. I think we have to do them separately then because they, they, run, they have time specific numbers, so we we'll have to do them individually. So private function at Borgia Court on 11 28, 2020. Is there a motion to approve that location? I think I have to record this, David. Yeah, and you, okay. you should because it's yours. Obviously. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Motion by Mrs. Bobby, only seconded by Mrs. O'Hara. Discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. 
Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. Let the record show that this is one he has recused himself and you can file the proper paperwork with the clerk. Item B, Cruz Sanoco at 1047 heading down my highway one morning per week from 9 a.m. to noon. And based on the license that we've been stating, I would assume it would be from 6 a.m. to noon. Um, do we know what morning or is it going to be, he doesn't know, it's just one morning a week? Um, he may be able to answer that. Um, so that's where the ordinance gets cumbersome, right? So it's tough to say which days I would be there or which day I would be there because it's weather dependent, right? So the Town North Smithfield ordinance requires me to have a place, a time, uh, and a location, but that's not always feasible, right? I could say Monday and then every Monday it rains for the next month, so it, I'd be there on a Tuesday, you know what I mean? So that's why I put the one day a week uh, and then to follow the ordinance, I went nine to noon um, because it you know, I'm not going to be out that late in the afternoon, typically, unless it's a special event. Um, but that's where that ordinance gets cumbersome. Generally speaking, like I said, other towns, what they would do with the ordinances, they would say, you can't go in this zone in these hours, you can't go in this zone at all, or you need a special use in these zones. Whereas North Smithfield's ordinance actually reads that I have any time, like if I want to go uh, up on Victory Highway, uh, or, or a great road, I got to get, every time I change locations, I would have to stand before you guys and get a new location uh, approved. Um, so it gets cumbersome. And, and the difficult part with that is like, in talking with the, like, Prue Snoko and talking um, with all the landowners, it's like, when's it feasible to do it versus not do it? You know what I mean? If there's a special event coming up, that's one thing, because they're going before the town council to get approvals anyway. Um, but when it's private land, the difficult part is, like I said, if, if it's a bad weather, like, I don't want to pigeonhole myself and say, I'm going to be there on a Tuesday and Tuesdays are like, I get a bad weather day or whatever. And I can't go there on a Wednesday. You know what I mean? Well, I think you could just order, if it's going to be one day a week at a particular location, you could say, and it, he's authorized to be at this location, one day a week, one day a week. any day, any one day, day of the week. So that word he's there Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday this week, you can't be there Friday this. Okay. That, that would be a lot of Unless you want to authorize more. But, but yeah, that, that was my point. I mean, if we just say one week, one day, depending on weather, if we could say at least one day a week, uh, and it would remove a spent that weather. Suppose the customers are coming there, and it's not creating a traffic problem, and it's a solely business service at least once a week that that leaves them the opportunity to need a two three time well his request is for one i can't i can't give him more than he's that if he's looking to be there every day of the week then you can authorize every day of the week he's only asking for one day i understand it seems that he wants to speak so i'm sorry i don't want to delay this over Uh, he can see, he can speak. He's not muted. He can speak. Okay. I, I couldn't hear you guys. Um, for, for food trucks, it's not financially uh, feasible to stay in the same location all week long for a long period of time. Um, you kind of want to build that customer base to where if you're there every Monday or every Tuesday, that's why I said one day a week. And I it would typically want to be at the same day. Um, the, like I said, the difficult part is with the weather, you know, we're at the mercy of the weather. Um, with food trucks, if you go to the same spot every day, it's kind of, they expect it there and they're not as apt to stop. So that's why, um, um, financially, it doesn't make sense for me to spend seven days in North Smithfield, right? So that's why my, my application is the way it is for the one day a week at the, the Prue Snoco and one or two on Iron Mine. My question only was, does he have to signify what day? But you're telling me, as long as we can give him one day, it's, it's his option one day, then I'm okay with that. Yeah. And the council, all on the same page. Yeah, the, whole, the, the whole concept of the ordinance is the council is authorizing this person to be at a particular location. It could be every day, one day, six days, but at least you know they're there. That's the concept yeah. of the ordinance, as opposed to somebody traveling Just around. Just driving in and parking. Yeah. Unless you want to give them that. These are not a 
this is not an itinerary vendor, right? That is a different thing. The food is upon us. So again, that, that state law, this, this ordinance is not some unusual ordinance. It comes from the state law enabling legislation. Right. So it's not uh, um, what it basically says on the state law is you fall back on hours of operation and location based upon your local ordinance. And that's where this, so if the council wants to expand the local ordinance, you have any right to do that. Like in Providence, they let the food trucks go wherever they want. That's not what you may want to do here. So whatever he needs, I would suggest that you authorize him enough flexibility to, to run his business if you're comfortable with the location. There, there, was, made, there was not. No motion. No, sir. So I'll, I'll make the motion uh, for uh, Bruce and Uncle. 10478 Gallon Highway 1128 for week 6 a.m. to noon. With a motion by Mrs. Weinstein, there is a second. Second. Second by Mrs. Bonioli. Any other discussion? Hearing none, no call vote. Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelinsky? Yes. Mr. Vadnik? Yes. In C, redevelopment solar panel on I M I O Road, one to two mornings per week. Again, it would probably be 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. motion by Mrs. Zelensky, second by Mrs. O'Hara. Any other discussion? Yeah, I have a question. Where is he going to be parked from I Is he going to be like actually on the road leading into the toll farm or just curious? Because it's a tight road around the end. Could you come around the corner and stuff? Tony, are you going to be on you going to be on a construction site? We'll, right, we will be on site. We won't be on the road. Any other discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Barnamioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelinsky? Yes. Mr. Radnor? Yes. At this time, I'm going to jump on the agenda and skip the removal of all the licenses and go over the time to read more. And we have a long agenda, so we can take care of this at the, at the end. So I think we're going to skip to. Just, just one quick second. Uh, just we're having audio problems. If everyone can just have their microphones in front of them and make sure they're on when they're speaking. Uh, I can hear it perfectly, but I'm wearing headphones, so we're having some uh, some uh, feedback. The feedback, the feedback to the, the public. That is, like this is always so perfect. I can hear it perfectly. It's hard to hear you guys. Yeah, it's because so speak into the microphone. on and all that is just be very difficult to hear. So we just be having to wait uh, where your microphone is. Remember when the button is up, when the microphone is up. They're all on, all the council members are on. Perfect. So we're just, we're just going to skip that license and we'll maybe pick up the agenda. So there's a proposal to abandon a portion of Stony Drive, a continuation of public hearing. Is there a motion to continue the public Motion by Mrs. Weinstein, is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. OJ. Roll call vote. Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. OJ? Yes. Mr. Zelensky? Yes. Mr. Vadnik? Yes. Madam Clerk, is Mr. Bernstein or Bernstein here? He is. He's on the he line along with Mrs. Rochambeau. Um, Mrs. Rochambeau? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. We do. We, everyone did receive the letter. We did get the letter with the exhibits A, B, C, D. We do have that information, Mr. Burns, Mr. Bernstein. Go ahead. You. Um, uh, first of all, thank you for taking the time to, to take this up uh, again. I would ask, and I think that it already is, that the letter be made part of the record with one correction. And that would be on page two of my letter, third full paragraph, when it starts from the above. The next sentence, it said, it refers to the council. That should be the planning board, because the planning board was where we had the workshop. And that's when uh, it was first vetted by the, the planning board. I don't have much to add to this letter. Um, I think it sets out you know the chronology of what happened and why we find ourselves in this position um 
I wanted to dispel the notion that this was simply a land grab because it, it, it isn't and it wasn't. Uh, my client had no interest in, in this part of Stony Drive um, from the time he purchased it until he found himself in this position after a survey was done that a portion portions of his property uh, encroached into the uh, portion of Stony Drive that we're seeking to have abandoned. Um, as I stated in the letter, we considered other options, one of which was to do nothing, which on a lot of levels didn't make any sense. Also to try to get a variance so that the uh, zoning board could address the and encroachments, but that that was not possible because my clients did not own the property into which the encroachment uh, protruded, and therefore they wouldn't be able to avail themselves of, of the variance. So this was our petition, and it's motivated by my necessity. There's really no other way to correct this situation. It turns out it's the most costly uh, alternative to my clients, but it seems to us after doing all our research that this is the only way that this situation can be corrected. Um, the planning board did uh, note several items of concern, uh, which were addressed in my letter as well. Uh, I think I've already addressed the first one that this was uh, motivated simply by a desire to increase his land area, which it wasn't. Um, another issue that came up was whether or not there was alternative access to the property behind it, which is owned by the US government and Air National Guard. Uh, and they have signed on, they have no problem with it. In fact, they're in favor of it and we attached the uh, correspondence that uh, was received uh, from, the, uh, from the National Guard. Um, the issue of compensation for this uh, abandonment was also brought up um, in light of the circumstance that my clients find themselves in. It would add another burden to them, however, uh, the assessed value was approximately 4,800. The taxes on that particular portion of the property would amount to $260.92, according to the calculations I received. And that won't be a deal breaker, but it's just one thing we would, it's just another expense that we would prefer to avoid, but if it's necessary, then we're prepared to go forward. Um, there was a question about the authority of the person who signed the letter from the National Guard. I think that's been put to rest. Um, there was also mention, and I think your solicitor has more information about it than I do. There was mention of a lawsuit that occurred involving some property in this subdivision. Uh, however, I, I spent some time on Court Connect and I could not see any, find any cases which held the town liable for simply abandoning uh, a portion of a road or, or a road. Uh, I believe that this was a dispute among other landowners in the subdivision and the developer, and the solicitor can correct me if I'm wrong, the developer ended up selling some property that he or she did not have the authority to sell. So it, it's not a concern in this case it's not binding. It, it factually uh, has no similarity to this case whatsoever. And lastly, and I know this is a concern to all councils, is that if you uh, approve the petition to abandon, what kind of precedent would it set? And I know, I understand. I'm the assistant solicitor in Gloucester, and these things shouldn't be given out willy-nilly. But this was not and will not be a precedent for any further cases unless the same facts exist. That, um, you know, that an encroachment onto a paper street exists, that that's 
some point a zoning certificate was issued, a building certificate was issued. Um, if those facts exist in a future case, which is quite unlikely, then I suppose it could have some president, precedential value, but it's virtually nil in this case. So without belaboring it, uh, everything is, is in the letter and the uh, supporting uh, exhibits. Uh, again, I'd ask that the, this be made a part of the record uh, for the council to consider. I believe my clients are um, on this meeting. If you need to have any questions of them, I'm sure they'd be happy to answer them. Are there any questions of Mr. Bernstein? Are there any questions of Mr. Bernstein? Uh, I have one question. Because I live in this neighborhood, should I, I can vote on this? I mean, I'm a subdivision, but you know, okay. Thank you. Does Mr. Ashambo wish to um, add anything to the, at the public hearing? Hang on. <laughs> We're all set, thank you. He's all set. He's all set. Is there anyone else, is there anyone else out there wishing to speak on the public hearing? Nope. There a motion to close the public hearing. So we'll just for motion by motion by Mrs. Wineski, second by Mrs. O'Hara. Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelinsky? Yes. Mr. Badnick? Yes. Next is discussion by council voter on action on proposal to abandon. Thank you. Home drive. Mr. President, I'll make the motion to approve the abandonment based on the uh, letter of October 26th and other accompanying uh, documents that have been submitted by Mr. Bernstein for his comments. I think I want to approve it. Motion by Mrs. Zelensky for approval of abandonment of, actually it says a portion, but I'm just, well, it's, it is only a portion. It's definitely yeah, a portion. Yeah. portion that's only done. But is there a second? Okay. Second by Mrs. Bonnie Mr. Ogier. Um, under discussion, we should also note that the planning board has weighed in and voted unanimously on the approval as well. The abandonment, um, when this first came before us, and the reason why it came before us, we didn't have exhibits A, B, C, D, the rest of the stuff, the background, which would lead you to say, okay, how do we get in this position? How did somebody build a house on a public right of way and it be approved? But the paperwork is there and it's showing that it's not, it's not their fault that this is what was done. I mean, if, if you go there and you look at the, you look at the plan and, and I go by there, that is right away <laughs> is where the street would be. That's why you couldn't get a variance. And the town signed off on all of this. And that's what really bothers me is that this is something that we can't, we can't go back and say, oh, wait a minute, we're taking away your certificate of occupancy. This is the fourth owner of this house, of this property. So it's been pushed on to him. And like he said, he's kind of doing the right thing and trying to clear this thing up. So it has a clear title because he bought the land and, and I don't think it will have a clear title without meeting those, those uh, zoning ordinances and stuff. Um, but it still, it shows that somewhere there was a disconnect between planning and the building inspector. Somewhere there was a, a disconnect that this thing was granted whether it was whoever surveyed the property, didn't survey it properly, or, or they decided this is the best place without really looking at how it fit on the thing. And, and now we're stuck trying to undo, undo the problem. And, and we're dealing with, with a similar issue. You'll see further down on high rocks, but the same thing. There's a, there's a miscoordination between planning and the building inspector that's creating issues for us. And all we can do is deal with it. We can't go back and change it. It, it already happened. So. I'm not, I'm not, after seeing all the documentation yet, I'm not, I'm not as aggressive to say, wait a minute, why do we need to do this? It's not, it's not Mr. Archambault's fault. He, he bought into it unknowingly. Um, so that's, that's my opinion on that. Any other 
Questions, comments? Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zielinski? Yes. Mr. Vanney? Yes. Is there something now that he has to do to, to finalize that and taking up his extra piece of property? You know, that, is, 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 that he has to do on there and not that? Yeah. To show the deed, the deed shows that he owns over a certain portion of that street. I think Mr. Bernstein will be um, here to have to record, um, record um, you know, obviously now you need a survey. Uh, meet the bound description recorded showing it the transfer from the town to his client. Um, and I assume, I don't want to make an assumption, that the council is not asking for compensation or are you asking for compensation? I believe, based on what we saw in here, they did a calculation to increase the value. I would, I would disagree with it because obviously this piece of land, and I stated this before, isn't just a regular piece of land. He really needs this piece of land to sell his property. Right? So we, but I don't think that you can put a value on it because of the use of it. It has a value based on open space that was there and what the, what the rate is, I guess. And that's how they calculated it. So I believe it already has a rate set to it on, on what, what the value is. It will increase the value of this property, the land value of this property with the additional taxes. Right, my only question is, I want to be clear, the council is not asking for the $4,300 of the assessed value in exchange for the abandonment. The abandonment is. Oh, I, I would not. No, no, no different than any other one that we've done. You okay. abandon them and, and he picks up the additional value. We're not asking to buy the piece of land. We're abandoning the land and, and they're dividing it. And they've already discussed that between the two landowners. It's not a 50 50 split, but that's been decided by them. <laughs> Um, and I would just um, ask the council to just also authorize the planner and or the administrator to sign whatever documents necessary to transfer it that, um, uh, I don't know if Mr. Gransky hasn't prepared yet, whatever is necessary to record that subject. Record the deed going to the town. Um, um, so is there, is there a motion to authorize the, the administrator or the town planner? Sign on all, all documentation okay. releasing that property to two to property owners. Motion by Mrs. O'Hara. Is there a second? Second by Mrs. Molesi. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Mr. Zelinski? Yes. Mr. Vanney? Yes. yes. Uh, thank you very much. Just procedurally, uh, are your counsel's right? I think. Um, an order of abandonment is the first step uh, that's prepared. I'll submit it to the solicitor's office, and then we'll we will take it from there and coordinate with planning how the deeds and and the new maps get recorded um, after it's approved by your planning office. Uh, I also agree that you know he's going to be picking up a little bit more property, so his assessment will increase. But he's paid his taxes. He and she. The Archambaults have paid their taxes every year faithfully, and they will continue to do so. Thank you. We're all set, David? We are. Thank you very much. Next discussion by Council Voter our action on payment of bills. Uh, before you read the invoice approval list, dated 11-16-2020. From the general fund, $640,576.62. Sewer and water, $2,707.73. For a total of $643,284.35. The following electronic transfers to the library, $38,410.75. For the school department, $1,725,126. For the fire department, two hundred and fifty-six thousand three hundred forty-five dollars and seventy-five cents. For monthly insurance to the local trust, one hundred forty thousand three hundred ninety-three dollars and seventy-three cents. The retirement account, five thousand three hundred ninety-seven dollars and thirty-nine cents. Bond debt service to the U.S. Bank, Rhode Island General Obligation Bond, seventy thousand four hundred twelve dollars and fifty cents. The total electronic payments of two million. $236,086.12 for grand total payments of 
$879,370.47. We have a motion to approve. And motion by Mrs. Lonsky, second by Mrs. O'Hara, and Mrs. Bongioli. Any discussion? Yes, please. On um, so I'm questioning the fire department because being a business owner, I had um, come across some information that in a July 6th article in the Providence Journal, our North Smithfield Fire and Rescue Department applied for and received a PPP loan from the SBA. And that loan is between $350,000 and $1 million. While the PPP is supposed to be used for payroll, and we provide all of the funding for that payroll, my question is, where did the money get used? And was there any thought to maybe tell the town We've got the money and you're good for the next three months. Mr. President, uh, I am aware, or I was made aware that, uh, well, first let's start and recognize that the North Michigan Fire and Rescue Association is a separate entity, not the town. They are a qualified small business. Mm -hmm. All the parameters of PPP loans are available to them. Mm -hmm. uh, I encourage that they uh, get guidance, pursue guidance as to the uh, propriety of the uh, application. Um, and I believe they did that. Um, and they uh, actually, I was in a phone call with them and the director, the uh, the state director of the FBA. Um, what they are to do with the money is is a um, it was not a, an issue of control for us. We have a contract with the fire department that uh, was agreed to prior to PPP being in anybody's head. Um, I think our fire department or our North Fire and Rescue Association um, uh, Association uh, company, um, um, as best I understand, has lived within the requirements of PPP and have rightful access to that funding. How it impacts the relationship between the fire and rescue service and the town in the future is to be determined. Okay. I was just wondering if they had any comment on it. Any other discussion on taking the rules? Roll call vote. Mrs. Ron Mealy? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zielinski? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. Excellent discussion by council voter on action on consent agenda. All items listed in this section are considered in one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a council so request, in which event they will be removed from the consent agenda. A, town council minutes of October 19th, November 2nd, 2020. Communications Animal Control Monthly Report for October 2020. Hospital Police Department Monthly Report for October 2020. Hospital Municipal Court Monthly Report for October 2020. Hospital Fire and Rescue Services Monthly Report for September and October 2020. Resolution from the Town of Portsmouth relating to state assistance during the COVID 19 emergency and communications and buttons notice from the Mensing Group LLC regarding a proposed marijuana cultivation and product management establishment that will be located at 616 Douglas Street in Cup Street, Mass. Would anyone like anything removed from that consent agenda? Mr. President, I would like to remove the minutes of our uh, council minutes after the 19th. Is there anyone else wishing to add anything removed? So we will remove the town council minutes of October 19th. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Uh, and so motion by Mrs. Lawrence. Is there a second? Second. 
Second by Mrs. Barnioli. We still have a proposal. Mrs. Barnamioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zawalinski? Yes. Mr. Van Nuyen? Yes. And discussion by Council about other action on specific items removed from consent agenda. Thank you. Council members of October 19th, Mr. Zawalinski. Second page, uh, second page from the bottom. Reservation uh, request for the BPW fuel dispensing system motion for everybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I remember when we were discussing that we were going to move uh, some line money around. Uh, and it was coming from the Mall Sustainable Mill Office building for the DPW fuel dispensing system. I'm pretty sure someone said that the Environmental Protection Agency is going to take with the demo of Sustainable Mill. Is that correct? Yes, we do expect that the uh, EPA will be handling the, the full demolition of, of the building. There's still some questions as to whether or not there will be incidental issues that we will be responsible for. Thank you, Mr. So I just would like to have a comment for you. Uh, some of uh, the and stuff will be just to say comment. Uh, we made that the environment protection agency is going to uh, Based on the demolishment of the building. Yeah, we didn't know that on the 19th. Huh? We did not know that on the 19th. Oh, well, we discussed it. We did. It was discussed. So, but that was the expectation. Um, we know it now. Yeah. But there were issues. Actually, there still is a pending um, document that must be signed between EPA and the State Historic Preservation Office. I don't expect that to be an issue um, based on the conversations that we've had with the state historic preservation officer, but uh, it could. Uh, but so, I mean, it is our expectation. Every indication is that we're going. And uh, actually, the tree clearing needs to start this week. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. It just—I know it wasn't. It wasn't a. A set in stone thing we were anticipating it, but we hadn't we had had formal approval and I believe we were closer to that at the last meeting that then now is closer than the public comment section going on and whatnot. So it was coming from there. So was there a was there a change or no change to the right. So now I get a motion to approve the minutes of the town council minutes from October 9th. So we'll just put a motion by Mrs. Lawrence to second. Mrs. Barnamioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Rogier? Yes. Mr. Zolinski? Yes. Mr. Rodney? Yes. Full business. A discussion by Council Board of Action on update on municipal building review task force. You have a letter from the chamber of the task force. It is the task force recommendation that we approve invoice number 18017 28 dated. September 1st, 2020, from Sakosha and Associates, the third was rented through August 30th, 2020, the amount of $120, which was approved for, for, for recommendation on September 10th, 2020. Is there a motion to approve? Right there, individuals, the seven rooms is present. Motion for the individual, yeah, motion for the uh, $1,120. Motion by Mrs. Walensky, is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Bonioli. Discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zolinski? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. And invoice number 18017 30 dated November 3rd, 2020, for service and rented through October 31st, 2020, the amount of $1,810 that was recommended for approval at the November 10th, 2020 meeting. Motion to approve. Motion by Mrs. Zolinski. Is there a second? Okay. Second one, Mrs. Barnioli. Discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Mrs. Barnamioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelinski? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. Next is discussion by Council Board of Action on Town Ordinance Sections 3.13 Historic Residence Tax Credit. And one continuation of public hearing. Is there a motion to reopen the public hearing? So. Motion by Mrs. Walensky, second by Mr. Oria. Roll call vote. Mrs. Barnamioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelinski? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. So we are in the public hearing. Is there anyone out there wishing to speak? 
Republican, perhaps Mr. Harris or Mr. Keenan out there? They both are. Uh, any, Mr. Keene is raising his hand. Huh? Mr. Keene is raising his hand. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Keene. Uh, yes, um, uh, th thank you uh, for uh, uh, considering this ordinance tonight. Um, as, as we explained in the, at the last meeting, this ordinance would help uh, uh, mitigate the costs for people who own historic properties within a, within a, a historic district. Uh, <clears throat> when they uh, restore uh, the exterior of their building. So the, the program um, under this current ordinance would um, <clears throat> be administered by the uh, State Historic Preservation Commission. But um, we've, um, I, I believe you passed a resolution last month on the, at the last meeting, I'm sorry, that um, would that ask the state legislature to amend the enabling legislation uh, to make the local um, historic district commission the authority having jurisdiction. So until until the legislature can act on that, the state um, historic preservation commission would be um, <clears throat> in charge of this program. Um, so um, we're, we're asking your, your um, uh, approval tonight. I think this would, this would be a, a, a sig significant step forward uh, towards uh, ensuring that, that our uh, beautiful historic buildings in town uh, are maintained adequately and that the, the property owners uh, uh, get some, uh, some relief from the, the significant cost of, of maintaining those buildings. Thank you, Mr. King. Anyone else? Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Yeah, I just want to say uh, I concur with uh, everything Rich has said so far, and this is really just a continuation of, we had a long discussion about this at the last meeting, so hopefully we have all the proper documents and we can uh, move this forward. Thanks. Mr. Harris, have you, have you looked at the, the language that we're looking at? I, uh, I have. I know you reviewed with the solicitor. Um, you can, both, the, both of you were okay with what was presented? Yes. It's the 20% with the 7,500 minimum? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the correct one. Yes, we are we are cleared to, to go with that. Okay. Anyone else? Nope. Is there anyone else out there wishing to speak to the public hearing? On the town ordinance section 6 3.13 historic residence tax credit. Anyone else? No, sir. We kind of really discussed at the last meeting, so motion. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? So we'll go Second. Motion by Mrs. Wesley and second by Mrs. O'Hara to close the public hearing. Roll call vote. Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelensky? Yes. Mr. Vanney? Yes. Next item discussion by Council Board of Action on second reading as amended because we amended it at the last meeting. We moved it to this meeting the second reading. Um, is there a motion to approve second reading as amended? So we'll so by the Motion by Mrs. Weinstein, there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Ogier. Discussion? On the discussion, where they talk about the town will provide a 20% reduction in property tax for the up to five years, does it matter how much they spend? They have to spend a minimum of $7,500. So if they spend $7,500, they can, they can get up to or guarantee 20%. Guaranteed 20% yeah, tax credit for five years. Right. Um, the state legislation said up to and left you discretion between that they shall receive 20% if they spend $7,500 or more. And if you spread out over five years. So it's $7,500 or more, and then they get 20% tax credit. 
they could spend fifty thousand dollars. They only get twenty percent tax credit for five years. Yeah. As, as a way to recoup some of that money, right. way, way to encourage investment. In these buildings. That's exactly right. Any other discussion? I just have one, one other question, David, that we have on the front of this the resolution. Yeah, the, um, the resolution that Mr. Queen had discussed, I prepared and I submitted as well. This obviously needs to be, um, this resolution is generated at the legislate at the state legislature. This is not something that we can do. The legislature does. Normally, the legislature requires a resolution supporting a bill. There's no bill right now. Um, my suggestion is that we um, separate apart from our ordinance. Mr. Keenan and Mr. Harris is asking for this expression to be changed to state law. We would need one of our state representatives to adopt this as a bill. And then we could pass the resolution supporting the bill like we do many, many times before the council. So the resolution that's here right now would take no action. We could do, we could take that action, but all it's going to do is it's going to, they're going to come back. They're going to come back with a bill that we have to support. So right. if you want it, you could take an action on this just to stop well, it. Uh, yeah, your reason I asked is on the Yeah, because I, we don't have a bill. Oh. That's why I didn't. Right, that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to clarify. Yeah, so we need, we need to approve that ordinance for second reading and then give that to the General Assembly this for enabling legislation and then the resolution comes in behind it. Right, what they would do is they would, if the General Assembly was meeting right now, you could call one of the reps of the Senate, they would adopt the bill, it would be bill number, you know, 80205, yep. they would then ask us to pass the resolution supporting the bill. Supporting the bill. Okay. So that's what we have. So we need, to, we need to do the ordinance Get into the General Assembly, get the General Assembly meeting. Well, no, the ordinance is going to go on your books right now. The change they want to this ordinance is to say that instead of having the project approved by the state, the state, it's going to be approved by the rest the, in town. The town. And that's going to take General Assembly approval on its draft of the legislation. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Just want to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Um, Richard Keene keeps raising and lowering his hand. I don't know if he wants to. Uh, Mr. Keene? No, um, no, I think um, uh, Mr. Igliozzi uh, uh, set forth the, the, the situation uh, pretty pretty well. So um, my, I took my hand down. Sorry. He did it a couple times. I wasn't sure if he wanted to say something. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, there, there is a small building. Mm -hmm. Is there any way to the building with the split screen so that we can see people speaking up? No? Okay. We tried. Yeah. <laughs> we tried yeah. Any other any other discussion on second reading? Go forward. Mrs. Bartimioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelensky? Yes. Mr. Vadnik? Yes. I have a pile for you guys to sign. Okay. So we're good. Okay. He raised his hand again. Yeah. Uh, do I have permission to speak, uh, Mr. President? Hand again. Okay. I, I just want to thank uh, uh, the council for their support. Um, it's it's truly been tremendous. Um, it's, and this is a good night to, to say this be, because um, several of you um, will not be um, uh, on the council um, in another month. So it, it isn't just tonight, it's been your support uh, for, for the last few years. Uh, it's been tremendous, absolutely positive. And I, and I would also like to, to thank uh, Gary Zofsky for uh, his support as well. So. Um, um, we can't do what we do without your support, and uh, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Richard, you, your group with the Heritage Association and Jeff with the Historic District Commission, you guys do a great job, and this is just kind of working all together to help you for the whole town. Thank you. New business. Discussion by council vote or other action on the council nine four AFSCME AFL CIO local nine three seven contract for a one year period. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? So, 
Motion by Mrs. Lansky, open the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Second, Mrs. Barnioli. Roll call vote. Mrs. Barnioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zolinski? Yes. Mr. Van Nuy? Yes. Madam Clerk, is there anyone out there uh, as audience wishing to speak in the public hearing? Nope. Nope. Now that's Gary. Mr. President, members of the council, uh, you have all the detail. Um, I think the this contract uh, represents a, a good, good business uh, uh, opportunity for both the town and its employees. Uh, the we gain some things. We also provide some things, and um, as such, I think it is a, a fair and equitable agreement. You know, I'm sure there are some in the public who say providing raises to people as we're struggling through this COVID circumstance and unknown budget, uh, still unknown budget situation. And I say to anyone, I think uh, especially because of what has been happening, this contract is appropriate. And um, I encourage your uh, your support and uh, ratification. Um, all of these folks, along with our uh, appointed staff, have been here day in, day out, um, with uh, you know very little exceptions, uh, only prudent exceptions, I should say. Um, and um, they've earned uh, what's in this agreement a uh, whole lot. I recommend your best. I encourage your um, ratification, please. Nobody else out there? No, sir. No, I would, I would agree with you. I would agree with the administrator that you know, these are the folks they here every day. They haven't they haven't been in trouble, they haven't been laid off. Mm -hmm. It's coming. We're gonna see if that as the highway bond, they're gonna be bound by the snow because they're not gonna say, oh, we can't, we're not working. So, Town will open up every day. You know, they, they continue to do everything that they need to do. Like the administrator said, I looked through it. I'm familiar with a lot of these contracts in the town. It's not a great contract. It's a kid, it's a kid here. Both, both sides, we gave him something, they gave him something. Um, and I, I agree with them that it's a kid here. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Any motion to close the public hearing? Motion by Mrs. Lawrence. Is there a second? Second by Mrs. Barnamioli and Mrs. O'Hara. We'll call for Mrs. Barnamioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelensky? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. Discussion by Council for our action on ratification. Authorization to sign the contract? That was just to close the public hearing. No, we're not going to close the public hearing. I'm not the public I can just do that. <laughs> the special by council order of action on ratification of the council 94 AFCME AFL CIO local 937 contract for a one year period. Is there a motion to approve the one year contract and authorize the administrator to sign? Motion by Mrs. Walensky, there is a second. Second by Mrs. Barbara and Mrs. O'Hara. Any discussion? Any other discussion? Mrs. Barnamioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelinsky? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. Next. <laughs> Next discussion by Council Board of Action on request for abatement slash waiver of late payment charge penalties imposed pursuant to Rhode Island General Law 34 5 8. Request by Brian Sweetman for a vacant waiver of late payment interest charge penalties imposed pursuant to Rhode Island General Law 44 5 8 regarding the estate located at 14 Lafferty Road, Assessors Flat 6, Lot 152. Stasis. I don't know if Brian's online. Um, there's an iPad. Is Mr. In the Sweetman phone. online at the current moment? Or his representative? 
There is a telephone, right? There is a telephone and there's somebody labeled an iPad. I don't know if it's either of them. I'm trying to unmute the phone just yeah, in I case. Spoke, I spoke to Brian a couple of weeks ago. He had called in um, wanting to waive his penalty for his real estate tax. Um, I'm not sure the reasoning. He just said that he never received the bill. We checked his address. His address is correct. He did receive a stool bill and that was paid on time. So I'm not sure what his claim is, but my recommendation is not, not to waive the penalty. This yes. was this was this was a tax payment that we extended the the, the pay thing for two weeks as well, correct? I'm sorry. We extended the payment the payment period. No, by this two was weeks. this was the first one that was due September 15th. Okay. The total amount that he um, wants to be waived is eighty six dollars and thirteen cents. And it's your recommendation that we not waive it. Recommendation is not to waive it. Administrative recommendation. The council have a pleasure. I have all, I go on the right there and then. If it's the address, let's just assume it's the address. Yeah, if you can ask her. Can't understand you. Okay. Uh, you know, if we get too close, it's going to get feedback. So, uh, okay. I'm expecting to stay as close as you can. I'm, I'm going to get feedback. I'll do my research. Okay. I, I believe I'm, I'm going to go with their recommendations. You have five cases, and I've never seen anyone deny that. But I just think uh, he didn't know. The sewers came in. Every, when we were waiting to vote, et cetera, everybody was dying. When are we going to get podcasts? When are we going to get this? When are we going to get that? I just don't think this is any reason. There's no, there's no sensibility about it. So is that a motion to deny the request? Yes. Motion by Mrs. O'Hara. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Mario. Discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? No. Mr. Zelensky? Yes. Mr. Vadnay? We did every one of these. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it's been a confusing time, we'll agree. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, you know, no. mm -hmm. And we've been, you know, we, we waited, yeah, we were late setting up tax bills, but we gave, in, in theory, they had longer time to pay it. Exactly. We knew a tax bill was coming, and, and we didn't know what it was going to be, but right. we sent, and then we sent it out, and we even gave the extension later on, so. Hopefully, that will be tax soon. Next item, discussion by Council Board of Action on supplemental bills, Ms. Davis. Oh, that was me. Sorry. Okay. I recommend there are two supplemental bills for seals that were issued in October for the total of $2,129.76. There's a motion by the finance director to approve supplemental tax bills totaling $2,129.76. Is there a motion to approve? I move. Motion by Mrs. Bonnie. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Odin. Discussion? There are none. Roll call vote. Mrs. Barnamioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelinsky? Yes. Mr. Vadnay? Yes. Next up, discussion by Council Board of Action on student bonds. We have invoice number 9008200 from SDB DPM invoice. David. Just go scroll up. 9, 10, 20, 20. In the amount of $520. Motion by Mrs. Walensky. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Barnioli. Discussion? Mrs. Barnioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelensky? Yes.
in STV DPM invoice number 9001891, dated 10 15 2020, in the amount of $740. Is there a motion to approve? Motion by Mrs. Zelensky. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. O'Hara. Any discussion? Very none. Roll call vote. Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelensky? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. Next item is Gilbane Building Company Change Order Number Three, it issued 9 18 2020. And I'll be honest with you, I went through this thing and I really couldn't tell you. The net change is previously at $79,417.97, but I really couldn't tell you what it's for. Um, it has the signature of the school committee chair on it. In, in this case, that's the only signature that's on it. Bob Jerk Senior looked at it. He is the um, he, has, he has it as a support of both Mr. CP and Mr. Jerkson. Okay. So is there a motion to approve change order number three in the amount of $79,417.97? I'll make the motion to approve. Looking for a second for discussion? Second. Second by Mrs. Bonnelli, discussion? I can only add that uh, this council is from the school department. Has been, this whole project has been managed extremely well by Mr. CP um, and overseen by uh, our OPM, Mr. Giorgicini, every confidence that we were headed in the right direction. I believe the change was because they have one contract to do designs over, they've just been, been adding to it as they get more money to it. That's my understanding of that as well. So we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelinsky? Yes. Mr. Radney? Yes. And then we have the Bain Building Company change order number six. We should send it and this one is for an amount of $32,388.12. Is there a motion to approve? I will. Motion by Mrs. Bonnelli. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Zelensky. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelensky? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. It would be discussion by council vote or other action on green site services group in invoice number 200046 for the Department of Public Works. In this case, is. Do you want to name that? Work started on the uh, fueling system. Materials have been delivered. Uh, they're still on site. Um, but the work is, or the project is, is proceeding well. This is just a, a first progress payment. Progress payment. We have before us invoice number 20251 dated November 10, 2020 from Green Site Services. Department of Public Works job and the total invoice amount is $24,000. There motion to approve. So, motion by Mrs. Swinsky, is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Bonnioli. Discussion? Hearing none, no call vote. Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelinsky? Yes. Mr. Radney? Yes. Next item, discussion by council board of action on purchase of road salt. Ms. Jesus. This council made a recommendation of the director of public works. He's recommended to take back off the contract for the city of Newport to purchase salt from Champion Salt Bells, being the amount of $50 and one cent per ton. And as a backup, as we know, sometimes, you know, we can't get the salt or it doesn't come in on time. But we're going to take it back off State of Rhode Island. Division purchase contract with more and salt. Award number 3572309 MK125 for the pricing of 5549 per ton. Motion to approve. the recommendation of the finance director. Motion by Mrs. Zelensky to approve purchase of salt from Champion Salt, LLC, the amount of $50.01 per ton through the city of Newport, Public Works Department, and from Morton Salt, Inc. Through the state MBA number 125 in the amount of 5549. 
motion moved by Mrs. Zelensky, seconded by Mrs. O'Hara. Any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Mrs. Bartomeu? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelensky? Yes. Mr. Radnay? Yes. Next item of discussion by Council Board of Action on trash collection at High Rocks condominiums at one couple way drive. Mr. Ogier. Yeah, so I put this back on after um, you know, so we got an email from Mr. DeBrice and you know, I did my research on the side too and saw that in October 2019, the planning board had uh, in a positive recommendation voted five nothing, uh, noting the original agreement in 2006, said that it would be handled privately. Um, I think that, you know, when I looked at that and I, I, I reread the original minutes from 2006, um, I, I heard the arguments that, you know, the original planning board wanted to, it was privately, it was going to be handled privately. You know, I look at the new planning board recommendation, I have to kind of take that with more weight. Um, you know, I, I know that there's been talk of, you know, precedent and stuff like that. And, you know, just like the last issue we discussed, all these things are kind of handled on a per project basis. And, um, what's up, talking about this. Uh, so, you know, I think we need to get a resolution on this. You know, I, we've been talking about it since February. I, I still think that, you know, we, we owe it to those residents to rectify it. Um, you know, it's not a lot of money considering some of the things we've, you know, authorized for spending as well. Um, and, and I'm prepared to make a motion tonight <laughs> on it. Um, you know, but I'll open it up to the rest of the council to, to get their thoughts. I'd like that question, Mr. Uh, when they went into an agreement um, with what your apartment, mm -hmm. they agreed as far as trash, because it's a private, it, it's a private entity, road, etc. And at the same time, they that they also agreed that they would give us ten percent affordable housing. That was never done. That was never done. And when the issue of our state cars came, he came before this panel and said, I, I I was wrong. And there was no more than two or three cars for our state. He was wrong. So if they're not working towards keeping their end of the bargain, such as that affordable housing uh, part of it, and as far as uh, losing taxes on out-of-state cars, which I'm going to say, I, you can't get into the garage, but just at different hours, different days, uh, there'd be a minimum, and I'm being on the low side, 25 to 30. So I look at that, and if he was uh, working with us on that aspect of it, but once again, uh, if it was done at others, former uh, town council, we were wrong to do it. I think there's one other one. We should have done it. This private road, private property should not have been done, but we weren't there yet. And I don't know why it went forth. I know there was arguments at that time, and, and it was a while ago, I would say. Right, Mr. Well, it was. Come okay, on. but when I say we're going to do that, they're taxpayers. Guess what? Businesses are taxpayers. We get other people coming in, and they they want the same thing. Now, if the agreement when they bought it was trash pickup, it's hard to take back. But they agreed to that from day one. They agreed to 10% um, of affordable housing. That didn't happen. And, and as far as uh, I know, when you have, uh, when you buy a condo, you give your registration to the uh, whoever's running. I do think we need to be careful about the other statement. No, I'm not cutting you off. No, uh, but I'm not saying registration, registration is a separate issue. I realize so, 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 well, okay, hold on a minute. I will, okay. This is the way I'm gonna speak. You get your chance. Okay. Don't interrupt each other. I go both ways. Go both ways. Okay. It, it, it's a mound of things. So I just say uh we start with one, and it's going to lead to others. They, when they went into that agreement, they knew it was there. They knew it was there. And I think 
you want to say good faith? I think good faith would have been made to ensure that that 10% was enforced. Because this town has to provide that. We have to come up with numbers. And the next people can say, well, they got away with it. We can, we can get away with it, too. Dad can talk next. <laughs> So yeah, I'll open it up to anybody else that wants to speak. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, the only thing I was just, I wasn't trying to cut it off, but I know we talked Where about it. Yeah. I'm not trying to pull it So <clears throat> we've talked about out of state registration before in a place that's mad, and we've cautioned that we need to not go down that route because it's not an advertised agenda item. And most of us took the ethics course last week, and we need to be very careful for the meeting violations when it relates to unadvertised items. I understand that it is a problem over there. But there is ways to rectify that. Working with the, you know, calling the police to say there's another state car, there's other areas to go. Most of these homeowners weren't there in 2006 when this original agreement was done. And I know I'm probably on the minority here on, this, on the council. But, you know, I do think that the, the recent recommendation by the planning board, taking into all those considerations, holds a lot of weight, in my opinion. And if they had the ability in reading it, they would have authorized the use of it. It's only $23,000 that we can go up to. And if that's not the situation, the council says no, then I think we should ask the next administration, that's the policy spot, but the task of the next administration to look at including it in their contract as well when it comes to trash pickup. Because it sounds like there's a way to do it through subcontracting. We had lengthy discussions about it in the budget cycle, and I, I, I thought we were going to do it at one point. And you know what? If it works, it works. If it doesn't, at least we know we gave it a shot. But I understand the difference also between commercial and, and residential, but you know, if other condo associations and other associations are already receiving those services, then we should make it equitable for all, grandfather those in, and look at changing our outline as to who can and cannot receive trash service in the town. Because if I was a resident, I would be asking for a tax credit. I wouldn't be asking for um, trash pickup at that point. I thought we would resolve this at the last meeting. Yeah, I thought we would resolve this at the last meeting when, we, when I asked the solicitor the point of question. Can the town council override a planning board decision? And the answer was, no, we cannot. The simple answer was, we cannot. The remedy is, the developer needs to go back to the planning board. This recommendation that came from the planning board does not say that they are waiving the ability. They made a recommendation to the council saying, if you want to pay for their trash pickup, we agree with that. That did not waive the requirement that the developer had to do trash pickup. That was given to the developer or offered by the developer as part of the project. We will handle trash pickup on our own. It's not a matter of money. I keep saying that. I've been saying that since February. This is not a budget issue. It's not a budget issue. And this is the second issue now that we discussed tonight where we run into a problem that there was poor coordination between the planning department and the building inspector because they continued to issue certificate of occupancies on this building without having final plan approvals. And it's creating a problem for us. It's creating a problem for the developer. He hasn't met some of the criteria, but he doesn't even have final approval on that thing, and yet it's completely built out and habitated. It's not a budget issue. It's a simple process issue. And if they want to go back and have the town pick up their trash, then have the developer file a petition with the planning board and go back to the planning board and have the current planning board override another planning board. But the town council cannot override a planning board. It's that simple. I thought we were done with the issue last month. After getting that answer, it came back. I know, I'm, giving, I'm giving you the shot to talk about it. That's the issue. It's that simple. We can't, what would stop this board from going back now and revisiting green development and telling them the planning board gave you this, this, and this, but we're adding 10 more things to it. You can't do that. It's not fair. It's not fair to the developer. It's not fair to anybody. And that's the issue. The issue is that simple. We cannot override a planning board decision. If the developer wants to go back and say, we want to revisit this, we want to have you pick up the trash, and we'll give you the 10% affordable housing, we'll do this, we'll do that, that's up to the developer. It's not up to this council. It's not up to any council. That's the issue here. We're, we're, we're in something that we don't belong in. We've crossed a boundary that we don't belong in. And the, the homeowners can request all they want. It behooves the developer to go forward and seek that change, not the homeowners. That's the clear answer to it. So, well, the only reason I put it back on is I remember there was two options that were being discussed. I don't want to put David on the spot, but there was the there's two issues here. There's the 
council overriding the original planning board thing, and then there was also some loose this, small discussion as it related to a budgetary item that could be added by the council, which we would have the authorization to do. But we seem to focus on the original planning board's decision, which I understand the precedent piece of it all. But if we have the ability to do it through a budgetary item, that is my argument here, yeah, not the reversal of the, the planning board's original thing, because I think there's two separate issues here. We're focusing on the one that is right now the easiest to just say, don't do it. But if we can do it, it, it's foolish of us not to, especially if other associations or other condos are receiving it. I understand that there have been some bad decisions that have made in the past, but if we have the chance to rectify some of those, I think that this council or the next council or any council should take that and do it and fix it. We've done it before. I'm not going to beat it. The solicitor's opinion was he assumed this was a financial issue, which is why he said we had the authority to do that. Upon better review, I believe. He realizes that it's a planning board issue, it's not a financial issue, which makes the second piece of it a moot point. It needs to go back to the planning board. Even the town planner said that. It needs to come from the developer, and if they want to come in with the homeowners, they can both come in, but it needs to go back to the planning board with the developer going forward, not the town council acting on it. Am I misstating something, David? You're not misstating it. I just think that the the dilemma, which is the practical problem, is that the developer, as we discussed, and the condominium owners are at odds. And the, the chances and likelihood of them coming to the planning board with a, a, a common petition is highly unlikely. And so the only question then is, is there a, a way to approve a financial relief for just the condominium owners. That's that's a dilemma. And I understand the president's point is well taken. The councilman Aussie's point is is there a way, another way to achieve this goal without forcing two parties together that don't appear to be able to communicate? I don't I, I don't want to say that. I don't want to speak for them, but having been at the planning board meeting and watched the developer and the condominium owners, and I know you've been there. Um, at odds, it doesn't appear that there's an agreement to be had between those two parties. So I agree. Planning board decision is one thing, but all financial decisions come from the council. But it's not a financial decision. No. That's, that's your point. case. That's your point. Yes. So, President Mr. Goyles, tell us how we can't accomplish providing private to this, this I, think, I think what you'd have to do, uh, Mr. Vice President, you, you would have, I would suggest that you need to revisit the council ordinance on what type of trash pickup you do allow and what trash pickup you don't allow. And only by passing an ordinance that solves it and says, we are going to accept condominiums trash or we're not would be the way to solve it. Because now you're dealing with it from the point of view of your ordinance, which is on the books. It says private trash pickup, private, you know, private entities, commercial, we don't pick up, only residential pick up on curbside. Now you want to change that policy or modify it. I really think that that's the way to solve it. Because sending these people back to the planning board, I, I just not seeing that that's going to resolve it, but I'm just, Throwing it out. The council can always act to an ordinance. That would be the third, I guess, a third pathway. Madam Clerk, is, is the town planner on? Are you all set for that? Yeah, I'm, I'm still listening for the taking all the dialogue. Thank you. I'm just I'm just trying Tom, to do you have do you have any, any background or can you find any records? I, I know I asked you to, to do a record search and did you found very little of how Laurel Woods and, and Rockcliffe did in and, and um, Silver Pines. How did they get the towns to pick up their trash over there? Was it the council that waived it or was it a planning board decision? Or how did that happen? Because the reality is that we shouldn't be picking up on private property, then and the solution is we don't pick up anybody's trash. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there'll be a lot of people who won't be happy, but Gary and I have been in that position where some people got paid for lunch and some people didn't. You know, a guy that didn't didn't think it was fair that he got paid for lunch. 
we were like, we said, you're right, you shouldn't get paid for lunch, and nobody got paid for lunch. <laughs> and so it's one of those things we can't allow you to push it because we shouldn't we shouldn't be picking up on, on private property. We shouldn't be picking up on in I know they're homeowners and they're taxpayers, and everybody knew that going in. If you read the planning board minutes, it's in there. It says it, how much tax revenue it's going to generate and how much little services it's going to draw from. Everybody knew that going in, but it's still still the planning board. Tom, did you hear what my request was? I did, um, but I have not gone through and researched the other historical records to see how you know trash was handled in those cases. I can tell you that on a case-by-case -case basis, when projects like this come before the planning board, typically the board, just like they did recently with um, uh, Slater Village, um, uh, you know, they'll they'll flush this out as part of the record and say, how is trash removal going to be handled, you know, publicly or privately, uh, just like they did for High Rocks, and th that's how they typically handle it. This question is to the solicitor. Um, I realize the trash company is insured, but is there any liability to the town that we are hiring a contractor to go on private property? I would think you're getting into a really kind of isolated issue, but if when we need to hire a contract, we normally require identification for anything that they cause. So unless it's something, some negligent act by by an action of a town employee agent uh, representative, we would not have liability. Okay, I just that's, want to make sure. General, since... That's the general language we put in. You may see in most of the contracts. We're only responsible for something we do, okay. not something our agents like a contractor do. They have to identify us. Okay, thank you. They carry insurance naming in the town. Right. They have to carry insurance to name the town as an additional insurer. That's correct. I'll just, you know, for the record again, state that I think the, the bright line that would be crossed here is the one as it relates to curbside pickup. There is the difference. Anywhere else when we pick up, it's curbside pickup. Period. We don't get into whose containers are they. One needs at the beginning of a contract, at the end of a contract. We don't have to buy new containers. You know, take the old containers out. All that non all those issues that that, that that come to play with a circumstance such as this. This this development was done very differently from any other that we have. It is what it is. Anyone else? Well, like I said, I'm, uh, I agree with the solicitor. That was actually one of my other points I was going to bring up was that I think we end up in some of these messes because the ordinance isn't clear what it could use for the clarification. And I do think that the next council should take a look at the track ordinance to set up or what grading ordinance. If it's not uh, not there, but to, to kind of help standardize some of these instances so that that way the planning board has better direction on how to navigate going forward um, and we don't end up in this situation. But I am prepared to, to make a motion tonight. Um, you know, I, I should have made it last time and, you know, and I didn't. Um, but, I, you know, I'm going to make a motion to authorize trash collection at High Rocks not to exceed $23,000 for the current fiscal year. Um, and to task the next administration to include trash collection services into the next uh, contract. It's it's what we originally decided to look to do back in February, and this process is dragged out. Um, and so that's the motion that I'm gonna, I'm gonna make. Motion by Mrs. Wentz, is there a second? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm almost there. Second by Mrs. Wentz. Motion by Mrs. Oh, yeah. I second it. Second by Mrs. Wentz. Discussion? Not a, it's not a, it's not that clear cut. It's not there's there were ordinances in the books that we have. This is why you can attest to this. We have an ordinance that says you build a subdivision, you put in granite gravel. Planning board consistently waves that requirement. 
consistently raise the requirement. And the town council cannot come into that door and say, oh no, we want you to put in grant equipment. It can't happen. It doesn't happen that way, even though it's an ordinance. Can't. So I'm telling you, we're crossing a boundary that we don't belong in. We're weighing in and superseding the planning board, and it's not where we belong. It's not where we belong by any stretch of the imagination. Can, can I ask one more question to the solicitor then? So in, the, in 2019, when the planning board we heard from the homeowners association, the trash collection issue, and voted 5-0 in favor of the positive recommendation, noting that it was also a private agreement that was agreed in 2006. How does, what is the precedent in that matter? Does, does the second planning board that's more recent, do they have the ability to kind of weigh in on past opinions and kind of change the direction of that conversation? Or, or what is exactly the relationship? And should they have not heard that at all and said due to the original agreement, we're staying out of it? I think the um, the president's raising the issue that you have to amend the original approval. And to amend the approval would have required all the formalities of the original application. That recommendation that was put on the the, um, the docket was put on by the homeowners, not by the developer. It wasn't a request to amend the original decision. Now we're really getting into the weeds on the technicalities of the decision. The planning board felt compelled to support the developers and ask the council to do that. Whether or not the, the condominium association has the authority to file a request to amend the original approval. By the way, we don't they don't even have final approval at this point in time. So the real question is the planning board could could pass the final approval that says that they will waive trash collection if the town council will pay it. If they vote it, even, even, if we don't, even if we don't authorize them to pay it, they can still say in a, in a ruling, but the ruling that they issued isn't for that. The question was, the planning board knows so well we cannot authorize the town to assume such a course during mid-budget cycle. However, we, we unanimously I put up and come forward a positive recommendation to the council, essentially asking if they'll consider the matter as a council will consider paying for trash removal. That's not the issue though. The issue is that they have to have the room. So it's not a budget issue. They were assuming it's the budget issue. They could have weighed in differently had they had a proper hearing, but they didn't. They just heard and made a recommendation for it. They want to go through the process and, and file with the planning board. If they have something change in that approval, then let them file with the thing and they'll go through the whole process with advertising and public hearings and all of that. It's not just to get a recommendation from the planning board to say, we would recommend that if the council wants to, that they, you know, we agree with it that if the council wants to take a trash removal, they can take a trash removal. That's not waiving the requirement of a private trash disposal on that site. That's why I say we're, we're crossing a line that we, that we shouldn't be because if we do that, any council is going to start overriding planning board decisions and you can't do that. You want to override a planning board decision or the zoning board of review, go to superior court. That's how it works. And, and we're, we're, where we don't belong right now. I've been saying that right along. It's, it's not a budget issue. We don't belong there. Any other discussion? There's a motion and a second. Roll call vote. Mrs. Bartomioli? No. Mrs. O'Hara? No. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelinsky? Yes. Mr. Vadnay? No. Next item, discussion by council voter action on signage related to entering North Smithfield on major routes such as Route 5, Route 7, Route 102, Route 146A, and others deemed appropriate for signage. Mr. Uh, yeah, so I just put this on really to, um, you know, I know there's not much we can do with it tonight because, um, you know, we don't, we don't have actual high numbers in front of us. But, you know, I can hear from a lot of residents that it would be really great if there were ways to identify when you're entering into the town and, you know, you, you drive into Burville and you see their signs and it's got the solar panel on it and it lights up at night and, you know, you really know you're entering it. Ours is, you drive by and there's a little blue thing, which is great that we're part of that energy program, but it just says, like, entering North Smithfield. And then eventually you hit one of the villages and it, it says you've entered in the village. And those signs are beautiful and great. Um, so I guess really this would be more so tasking the next council to, to work, or the next administration to work with DPW or maybe even the state to find out if there are any any funds out there to try to add more signage saying you know entering North Smithfield 
The only thing I could really point, it doesn't even have to be anything as fancy as Roberto and other communities have. I mean, Smithfield has like a, literally a giant green sign that says, welcome to Smithfield. And you really can't read it at night. Um, but at least you know you're entering into that community. Um, and so, you know, that after hearing from residents, you know, I thought it would be a good thing to put on and to at least start the conversation and, and see where it comes from there. Conversation that happened from the state, though, whether one of those votes is a state vote, we can't put aside. Right, no, I agree. That's why I was saying we're at stake. And, and people don't, people really don't realize how many state votes we really have in here that, that use, who use the state vote, which use the state vote. Obviously, really? uh, people wrote a number group, but there are a lot of streets in, in our town that are state roads, and, and we need to talk with them in order to put those, that sign in here. I'm not saying it's not something that we can look at, but we really need to involve the state, Mr. Dobson. Because this was on the agenda, I did uh, contact uh, the engineer that we work with from the State Traffic Commission for guidance. Um, the green directional signs, perhaps I'll ask uh, Smithfield, I don't know, uh, Councilman, which one in particular you're speaking to, uh, can be put up um, by DOT on request from the community. Um, the, they are going to be very simple, saying now entering off Smithfield or, or something of that variety. Um, <laughs> signs like the town of Barville has on 102. Uh, are of a special design um, will re would require a physical alteration permit for the installation alongside the road. You also have to have appropriate setbacks. Uh, that you know that one is a prime example where it's it's quite a ways off the side of the road, but still visible because of the configuration. Many of our circumstances, certainly 146 coming north on, on 146 from Lincoln into North Smithfield. I mean, it's going to be hard pressed to find a location there where you can put something like that. Can you put the typical green directional sign? Yes, I don't think that there's, and, and I don't think there'd be any cost. Um, not 100% certain of that, but there's a myriad of, of issues that get in. Uh, you know, sight distance, um, the, the type of sign, they have to be breakaway designs, all of that. You know, that DOT uh, and the traffic commission can handle. Uh, at, at, and, or you can go forward with a request for, um, you know, to give us special designs if there is a location. Uh, when our one of our Eagle Scout candidates who actually put up the sign in, in Forestdale and the one out at Primrose, uh, we didn't talk about that. Looked into those things. The number of locations that you can come up with where there's enough um, uh, area on the side of the road to be able to put a an attractive you know, something that we'd be proud to see there. It's very, very difficult to come up with it at a town line, you know, in places inside the town line, you know, perhaps, but at the town line, it's quite difficult. Uh, not impossible, just um, there is engineering required to get a, a physical operations permit um, put in place. And of course, the design, the special designs the town would have to pay for um, as, it, as it sees fit. We'll continue on this. All right, all right. A little left sheet, if I may. How many of there uh, years ago? Uh, there was a cartoon that was around last day. And years ago, he published a cartoon that said, Welcome, uh, entering North Smithfield. In the WT? Yeah, it dropped the ages. <laughs> somewhere in plain, but I have a book. I had a blow up with that. I found it on my toes somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Next item discussion by Council Board of Action on Planning Board Memo. Before you a memo from the Planning Board. Conducted a public discussion on November 5th meeting regarding the approach to a recently published RFQ for the Alamo property. Tom, would you like to weigh in on this? Uh, no, I think Jeff is in attendance. He can he can speak to it. Uh, Mr. President, uh, town council members, um, the, the chairman, Mr. Pilardi is also on too. Um, so if he, if there's any questions that he can answer as well. Um, originally what, what we discussed at our planning board meeting is, as I said, was um, just the, um, we, we reviewed the RFQ uh, and we noticed that there was a uh, requirement for two public hearings um, we're offering to um, host 
said uh, public hearings as part of uh, the community input portion. Um, so, I mean, um, that's really where we stand. We're, we're, we're in an agreement that, you know, we need to get some stuff. We need to get that property moving. We need to get activity down there. We need to get it, get it moving. Um, so yeah, uh, that's really, uh, the, the, the bulk of the memo. Um, if, uh, if Gary Pilardi wants to add on to it, uh, go right ahead. But, um, I, I'm also here for any other questions that you guys might have. No, I'm, I'm fine with that. Thank, thanks, and Jeff. And my boss is totally okay with it because that was feedback. We don't need any action. Not right now. Next slide of the discussion by Council about action on Havel comprehensive land use analysis RFQP. In cost proposal and bid process selection of firm, Mr. Thompson. Mr. President, members of the council, consistent with uh, prior meetings, uh, we have we went forward with an RFQ uh, and P process on this. Uh, we, uh, in the first request, only received one response. Uh, we decided to go back out. Uh, we received three responses. And uh, what's before you tonight is a recommendation of the planner and I um, that uh, Western Sampson, uh, with their proposal, um, offers a, a very attractive circumstance to have uh, a full sweep of uh, engineering and technical resources uh, in one firm to be able to look at the Hallowell structures uh, from their existing condition through to um, uh, design, architectural design features, uh, and across the site in terms of wetlands uh, and appropriate land use considerations with planners in-house um, who are um, extremely familiar with Rhode Island rules, uh, both having, uh, one in particular having, uh, I think both have substantial experience as planners in Rhode Island. And uh, we uh, are, uh, frankly, I'm excited uh, to have this come forward and to begin this process uh, under the direction of the planner uh, to uh, engage Weston and Sampson and uh, start the process to evaluate this, this site to give us options, to come up with a list of options from a professional perspective that recognizes uh, the, uh, the town's needs and the site opportunity. Um, the other two uh, proposals that we uh, received were both by uh, impressive uh, firms and submissions. Uh, but uh, it was in addition to Weston and Sampson having all the resources, a uh, higher number of resources in house, they uh, looked into the, the output that came from the uh, public meeting that, that we together had at Hallowell. And, uh, uh, work from the perspective that the town wants to keep this land and see how to use it best for uh, town purposes. There still will be a uh, consultant involved, it's the one outside consultant, that would uh, evaluate uh, some, you know, what are the economic opportunities that might be there to the point that maybe one or two of those could fold in. But they, they clearly looked at it, Weston and Sampson clearly looked at it from a, a town use first and some potential augmentation second. The, the, the proposals by the other two firms pretty, you know, came across as a circumstance where they were looking at saying, well, what can we do with this? You know, can it be commercial? Can it be residential? Can it be rural? Yeah. And they were also having to reach outside uh, to be able to um, have all of the uh, resources available to, to make it happen. Um, I encourage your authorization for us to be able to uh, go forward to accept the proposal and, and move it forward um, under the supervision of the plan. With public meetings that, that would be held to uh, involve the public, we, that is accepted and known uh, both 
by Western New Hampton and certainly by the planner. Um, as we had to come the initiative back in uh, when we uh, called for the meeting at, uh, at Hallowell to start with. Uh, there needs to be public input. But to start this process, the most important step is to get a consultant engaged and not bias that consultant with any particular slant. Let them go through their work. And obviously it's done because they're an architect, because based on qualifications, once you pick them, then you're going to pick the cost. They don't see a cost in there. Um, there is a cost. Yeah. Um, but but one the issue that I have with, with how all this, it, it, it's really a two-pound approach to this. And obviously these companies have done it. Reading the resume, they've done this in a lot of communities, looking at existing buildings, how do we make it better? Like, we, you know, similar to what we're facing with the police station. And I look at it as we need to do something immediately on how well. Determine what buildings are going to be demolished and no longer have a use. And those that do, how do we secure them from further deteriorating? That's the, that's the immediate thing that we have dollars to address immediately. Some of this other stuff is a, is a 5, 10, 15 year plan, probably build out. It's not something that's going to happen in two years. So it, it's like a multi prime approach, and, and my big concern is the immediate stuff right now is how do we secure that site to make sure that it doesn't deteriorate further on what we plan on keeping there or potentially keeping there. And, and, um, you know, I agree. That's, that's how I look at it. That it it's, two, it's a two part thing, and the planning board will really be involved in that long term, long range picture of it, of what we develop on that site. But we need to figure out what we're doing immediately. On that site, so we don't continue to deteriorate and lose what's there if we want to keep it. So, do we, do we as a council, do we approve this only based on the qualifications? No, there is a, uh, there is a cost proposal, I believe, so it may be the last page. Um, Mine was blank. Mine was blank. I have one. It's the cost proposal on. Eighty-three thousand five hundred sixty-nine dollars. Eighty-three thousand. I thought it was eighty-eight. Sure. Eighty-three thousand. Yes. I think we have that. Oh, it's eighty-two thousand. And we have four hundred thousand dollars in budget for work at how long? We have uh, at least six hundred thousand dollars. Well, the last I knew that we we increased it by we we're at three. We increased it from four hundred to work six hundred. No, we increased it by three. Three. Yeah. Okay, I missed that. Thanks. That was in, in the meetings with the school department where we where we did the HVAC upgrades and we, we split yeah. we split yeah. we split on that so that they got what they needed and we got a little bit more to make sure that we could get what we needed. I didn't see I didn't see a cost on it. So. We're still looking for it. I'm sorry. Uh, I apologize. Oh, okay. I don't know. Can you tell me how many page? I mean, for me, it's on page 267 and 279. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my, my back page was blank. There we go. Thank you. Printed blank. How weird. Eighty-three thousand. Eighty-three five sixty-nine. Yeah. You can see the breakdown of the cost. Some of that breakdown may change as this moves slowly, but um, essentially it is an agreement to go forward with a, a budget of eighty-three thousand five hundred sixty-nine dollars. Obviously, will be a comprehensive assessment of this yes. site um, with the, I believe, the bulk of the money being spent in private places. Uh, Yeah, the new lines for making sure they haven't eliminated all the weapons. I mean, we have some of that stuff already, but we won't really have to come again and update it. And... This is not a lick and a promise. This is a thorough assessment of the site and what can be done. Based on the recommendation of the town administrator, is there a motion to approve so in hiring of Weston and Sampson? To do a engineering land use consulting service to have a elementary school property development in the amount of eighty-three thousand five hundred sixty-eight dollars. Motion by Mrs. O'Hara. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. O'Hara. Thank you. Any other discussion? 
Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Yes. Zielinski? Yes. Mr. Babbe? Yes. I got it. No worry. <laughs> now, letter, letter K says the discussion by Council Board of Action and how copy an RFQ process. And that is in regards to Mr. Kravitz. Yeah, that's that's a duplicative uh, kind of agenda item. Okay. Pretty much what we just did, correct? Yeah. Right. Okay. Next slide of discussion by Council Board of Action on one prime health care services landmark LLC and prime health care services landmark MOB LLC versus set up dual direct capacity as tax assessor to the town of Smithfield for handling case number. PC 2018-5072. Um, just for brevity, there's no action needed on any of those items. One, two, three, four, four. That's not the reason why. That's correct. <laughs> Next slide, a discussion by Council Board on action to avoid traffic and civil engineering design services in accordance with Commerce RI 2020 Site Readiness Grant Program services involve civil and traffic engineering analysis from new location of Lone Bound Ramp to 146 on the road and new access road to the Ranch Road here on the district, making great road to on the road. Mr. Kravitz. Yeah, this um, <clears throat> is a furtherance of the of this project to provide access um, from Pound, Pound Hill Road north to uh, Branch Village. To effectually get Branch Village off the ground, um, it really needs a, a mother means of access. This is the presentations we made to the council last year. Uh, we provided an update. We had traffic engineering services performed by McMahon. And so we had achieved a grant from Commerce RI. It's called the Site Readiness Grant. And uh, we went out for RFP for these services. Uh, Gary and I met with um, the companies and 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 we're, we're suggesting we go with beta for this project. Um, and basically what their proposal is, is to uh, submit a pre-application of sorts by way of a PAP to DOT. It's going to get us, it'll get the town 10% design plans and it will hopefully carry the town through what they call a NEPA process. Um, due to the fact that we're dealing with the federal highway administration on 146 is a, a different bit of a process that you have to deal with. Hopefully we can get what's called a categorical exclusion, which is similar language to that of CDBG. It's federal, a federal review, um, environmental review. And if it's, uh, let's see. Yeah, in the last page of this proposal, um, we're looking at the fees um yeah total labor subtotal 36,000 they're recommending 40,000 the grant is up to 100,000 so we're in really good shape with it and there's going to be more work to do after we complete this work but we're just recommending the council allow us to engage with beta I'll try to answer any questions if, if you have any um, did you say that we had a grant for 100,000 to do this correct I think so, yeah. <laughs> uh, if I might, Mr. Yeah. President, like to add to that. Yeah, what we, you know, as we, the time I went through, the planner I went through the evaluation, we, uh, again, we received multiple proposals. Uh, and uh, uh, just from a qualification standpoint, because this was transportation, we, we uh, assessed that beta was the way the beta approached this was in the town's interest, uh, both in terms of their background and experience, uh, especially having completed the design for the last intersection on 295 um, that was for the, uh, uh, the Johnston circumstance with uh, Citizens Bank. Um, so they've been in, they've been in this, in the thick of this over the past, in, in the, the past few years with the Rhode Island DOT Federal Highway. Um, beyond that, they also looked at it with the, 
most aggressive timeline um, and, the, and, and approach. And it really comes down to a circumstance where, you know, the, the town spent a good amount of money uh, a number of years ago with the Grand River Redevelopment uh, Study that um, is the driver for this. I mean, that study acknowledged that on this land, in this currently industrially zoned land, there is opportunity to create up to a million square feet of business buildings. Um, we don't, I mean, they came up with a layout that, you know, that hypothesized uh, to our engineer, um, that hypothesized what that could look like. But it, I mean, who knows what it actually will look like. The issue is that we have this land with utilities uh, available. Nothing has happened on it. Not because the owner doesn't want something to happen, but because the, the access is so limited. And so we've been looking at this for quite some time as a, uh, a reason to, uh, or as a means to, to differentiate it and, and make something happen. <laughs> and what it really comes down to is what we're looking at here is trying to fill out the the marketing profile of what this land is. And you know, clearly we have water available with a 12 inch water line out in Great Road. We have a, a, our intersector sewer line comes through this property, got a rail line there um, that you know it's inactive today, but it could be active for the right player. Um, we have multiple things that are great. What we don't know is what it can handle from a traffic standpoint. And that's what this work is going to fill in the blank on, is get us to a point where, you know, it, will it say that it can handle, you know, a, uh, oh, I don't know, the next Empire State Building? Uh, probably not. Um, but, you know, how much of that million square feet is really practical? Or could it be, you know, in terms of the kind of traffic generation that can be handled? It, it's really a utility issue that needs to be defined. And with practicality, that not only will it be this, you know, the number of trips can be handled, but they can be handled efficiently at both ends. And in the win win circumstance of all of this is that, with ideally, we get relief on Great Road as somebody else pays the bill to put in a roadway that gives them economic opportunity that helps us to raise more and avoid the tax. So, this is a great step. I'm really happy that we were able to move this to this point. I think Bader is the uh, is an ideal firm to at its time and place to uh, be able to make this happen uh, with the next administration uh, to uh, fill in that blank. Encourage your your uh, approval of this and authorization to sign. It's just the next it's the next step in the process. We're we're working our way to get to that point. So now we need that next step that says okay. If you open this up like this, you can do this. And you need, you need that piece because no one's going to come if they don't have access. And so you, you've got to work your way incrementally into it. And it's just the next step. And the fact that we have great money to help us do it makes it, it, makes it even better. Thank you. From here in the record, you need the authorization to sign in the plan as well? Approval and authorization to sign. There are motions to approve. With data um, for professional, the proposed the proposal for traffic engineering services in Range Road Redevelopment Area 146 Interchange on the Road Rampier location. The motion to approve okay. for data in budget $40,000. Okay. Motion by Mrs. O'Malley. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. O'Malley. Any discussion? Also authorize the administrative uh, process. Authorize the administrative sign as well. Anything else? Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zielinski? Yes. Mr. Van May? Yes. Next item of discussion by Council Board of Action regarding escrow agreement by and among GDIM 1 LLC, GDIM 2 LLC, GDIM 3 LLC, GDIM 4 LLC, GDIM 5 LLC. GDIM 6 LLC, GDIM 7 LLC, GDIM 8 LLC, and GDIM 9 LLC, collectively the tent in the town of North Smithfield, Rhode Island, the town or the escrow agent in conjunction with the development installation of the photovoltaic solar energy systems, collectively the system, 
on the properties located in those Smith Island at a 1115 I and Mine Hill Road, flat 16, lot 6, off North Smith Hill Expressway, flat 12, lot 136B, off North Smith Hill Expressway, flat 12, lot 137. 0 I and Minor Road, flat 17, lot 175, and E, 11 Pence Road, flat 15, lot 12, collect away the project. The property. Huh? The property. Right. <laughs> 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 no, <I'm> like... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> We do have an agreement here. And this was goes back to the discussion we had almost, almost a year ago, where it was for an escrow agreement for the commission fee at the time it was there was a choice of Cash bond of eight hundred and forty thousand with a surety of three hundred and sixty thousand dollars or all cash bond. It appears that the tenant is looking to go with an all cash bond of one point two million dollars, which will get put into an account, into an escrow account with all of the um, agreements that were put in place earlier. And Council so chooses to agree with this. We have to authorize the administrator to sign on this. There's a council's plan. Uh, question for the solicitor. Uh, David, of course, if you looked at this, we're following everything. Uh, I mean, I looked at it. I'm not going to try it. Yeah, this is the, the form that we had approved originally, but they now have chosen the one point million dollar cap. Okay. Cash so. There a motion to approve? So moved. Present. Motion by Mrs. O'Hara and Mrs. Molenski. Um, just uh, in the discussion, we need to change that date. It's no longer October. It'll be a November date. Uh, so we can put today's date on it, I'm assuming. And authorize the administrator to sign it as well. Yeah. Any other discussion? Before Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelensky? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. And the last item, or well, next and last item, discussion by Council Board of Action on authorization to purchase rescue engine fire truck. I put this on there with the administrator's request, but we do not have all of the backup at this time. We put it on just in case we did get it, so we could we could this project. Uh, as well as we'll eventually probably get addressed by the next time. I will request the request may come to the next time. For the record, I just, Mr. President, if you don't mind, uh, okay. would like to encourage that um, the council and the future administration um, give this ample consideration. We have together, uh, as I started this meeting, uh, done some uh, very good things. One of them has been to improve the conditions of the vehicle. Um, we did it uh, in the brand way with. Uh, Two new rescues and a, and a new uh, uh, rescue engine. Uh, and we did it in a, a very cost effective way with a used engine uh, when we were faced with the surprise of our one of our aging units just coming apart on us, uh, literally coming apart. Um, what we don't want to do is get back into that situation of trucks falling apart. And we also want to fit these things into a circumstance where the spending coincides with the amount of cash that builds up in our third party billing account. That's where all the funding for these vehicles will come from for quite some time. Uh, and we've been knowing what you've gone through as a council with, uh, with budgets, a, even a $300,000 item for purchase of a rescue is a, is a potential budget buster. 600,000 for a fire a rescue engine is absolutely a budget bust. Um, and, you know, in a normal um, budgeting year. So, trying to keep these things scheduled such that the cash flow from the, um, the third party billing account pays the bill is, is the best way forward that I can indicate um, from my experience as the administrator. 
and you want to encourage. That said, you know, the, the next vehicle, the next rescue engine that we should, uh, from a, a, a third party filling circumstance, the timing should be a few years down the road. We bought a rescue engine two years ago, effectively, and that, that was a $600,000 purchase. To be able to replenish that fund, the next one should be seven years out. That's the idea. Every seven years, you buy an engine. Every three years, you buy a rest. And, and with that as well, we're moving forward with one now will strain that account. It probably will delay the purchase of the next rescue, barring some other source of funding. But I really have to tell you that I think it is the right thing to do at this time. And I, I really wish we had had the three bids in tonight to be able to ask you to consider authorizing that purchase knowing that it will take close to a year to get the truck mm -hmm. registered, you know, built and registered. These things don't sit on a shelf anywhere uh, in, the, in the style and, and accommodation that uh, our folks find. And that's not our, our uh, fire and rescue service being so particular about, you know, what kind of cushy seats are in it. That's not the deal. What it is is, is pumping capacity, uh, how much water it carries, uh, how much equipment it can carry because what we buy is, is rescue engines, not just engines. We buy you know engines that can function as a rescue. So they have many things on board that are similar to what's what go out on rescues so that they can provide a dual, dual purpose. They can't transport a patient, but they can provide emergency service on the scene. So they're rescue engines, not just fire engines. So I encourage you, you know, those of you that are going to be here in the administration, keep going with this, um, recognizing that we are, I think, taking better care of the trucks now. We have them uh, protected against rust on an annual basis. That's where we've lost them. It's the undercarriages that have fallen apart. Um, it isn't, you know, as you see, all of these, they always look fantastic. They keep them clean. They, they keep, they maintain them mechanically. It's the underbodies that, that rust away on us. And we've got engine two that we bought from um, uh, Nasonville, thank you. Um, it, it's an older vehicle. It's already beyond the 15 years that we would like to have these, these units uh, age out, uh, but it's in great shape. It's the ideal unit to have as the back. We have two primary trucks and a back. We have two rescues and a back. And uh, the, the piece that we're missing right now is that solid backup. Um, we still have one of the older engines that, you know, is, is really every time it goes out on the road, they wonder if it's going to come back. Um, and that's not where we want to be as a community. We're better than that. So I just encourage you when the, when the proposals do come in, to give it careful consideration, try to time it, with, uh, listen to the, the advocacy of the chief, certainly. But do your best to try to time it to a point that it recognizes this the capital circumstance that we have from the third party. Thank you. You know, I did have this discussion with the Gary earlier in the week, and that's some of the things that have been discussion is that fire trucks aren't on a rack item. It's not like you go to the dealership and I want this fire truck. Nobody makes a fire truck anymore, a standard fire truck. They're all custom built for, for what you want. Nobody knows fire trucks sitting there waiting to be sold. You might find one sitting on a lot that someone ordered and then changed their mind and it was already built, but you're not going to find the truck that you want to be on spec. They didn't move them all that way. And the other thing that we were talking about was, yeah, they have run into a program where these trucks are being going and they're treated and their undercarriage is being treated with, with the highway department, with the, with the, the big dump trucks that we're buying. If you go up there and dump your leaves on the weekends or whatever, look around on the lot and you see there are a lot of new trucks up there. They're in good shape. And we're trying to keep them in good shape so we get the best price we can out of them. And, and we may be able to stretch that truck from seven years to nine years, maybe, if we're lucky by doing this. And it's not a lot of money. We talk, you know, it might be two grand on a truck, but when you're buying a six hundred thousand dollar truck, two thousand dollars is small money. It's small money in, in the big picture. It's not a little bit of money, but it's small money in the big picture. And so yeah, like, like the administrator was saying, we've done a lot of things that were good. We're going in the right direction in a lot of areas. This is one of those things with the fire department, they're doing the same with the highway department, doing the same with the police department. Putting them in the vehicle that they should be in, that are safe, that are reliable. It's just it's just the right thing that we should be doing. And, and yeah, so we, we were hoping to have this stuff in, but it didn't come, but we don't bother now. 
We know that it, we know that it's coming over the year, and we'll address it. Hopefully, we'll address it. Last item on the agenda. Discussion by Council Board of Action and Renewal of Yearly Licenses. I gotta read all this. <laughs> Liquor licenses. All licenses are subject to certificate of good standing, payment of town taxes, approval from DOH, insurance certificate, fire inspection, and tip certification. VH Inc. doing business as Village Haven, located at 90 School Street, Class BV. Blazing Wings in doing business as Buffalo Wild Wings number 558, located at 55 Down Village, Class BB. Coin Op Pool Tables, G Box License. PDM Enterprises doing business as Eaters Club, located at 1402 Victory Highway, Class BB. Entertainment License. Lindy's Tavern, located at 98 School Street, Class BB. Entertainment License. Cash Corporation doing business at Lotus Fine High Cuisine, located at 175 Eddie Brown Highway, Class DV. Monkey Dog Cavern Inc. doing business at Monkey Dog Cavern, located at 82 School Street, Class DV, Entertainment License. No Smithfield Fly Fishing doing business as the island, located at 1600 Victory Highway, Class D, Entertainment License. JM Management Services LLC doing business as Cabin 621, located at 6.1 Pound Hill Road. Class BV Entertainment License, North Smithfield Wine and Spirits Inc. doing business as North Smithfield Beverages in Moore, located at 900 Victory Highway, Class A. Park Square Wine and Spirits LLC doing business as Park Square Wine and Spirits, located at 60 Eddie Downing Highway, Class A. ATM Development LLC doing business as Wide World of Indoor Sports, located at 621 Pound Hill Road, Class BBL. Yama Fuji Inc. doing business as Yama Fuji, located at 950 Highway, Class BB. Texas Roadhouse Holdings LLC doing business as Texas Roadhouse, located at 39 Down Village, Boulevard, Class BB, Jukebox License. The Perse Residence doing business as the Villa at San Juan. Located at 400 Menden Road, Class D Entertainment License. Sales Hill Rock Gun Club Inc. Located at 71 Sales Hill Road, Class D. Jonathan Branshaw Inc. Doing business as Coffee and Cream Restaurant. Located at 900 Victory Highway, Class DPL. Mr. Royal Inc. Doing business as Lower Level Bar and Grill. Located at 175 A Mountain High. The motion to approve. Motion to approve all the Payment of town taxes, approval from the Department of Health, insurance certification, fire inspections, and tip certification. Motion by Mrs. Weiss, is there a second? And second by Mrs. Barnioli. Any discussion? We'll call the vote. Mrs. Barnamioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelinsky? Yes. Mr. Vadnik? Yes. Victory licenses, all licenses subject to payment of town taxes, approval from GOH, and fire inspection. The Budding Violet in red, white, and blue, located at 601 Great Road. JSC Management Group LLC doing business at Burger King, located at 66 Eddie Darling Highway. Cagney Food Service located at 1186 Eddie Darling Highway. And Cagney Food Service located at 621 Pound Hill Road. Colvia Enterprises LLC doing business at Caesars Corner Market, located at 780 Great Road, extended hours license. CP Gas located at 53 Great Road, extended hours license. Cumberland Farms Inc. doing business as Cumberland Farms number 1274, located at 901 Victory Highway. Dance Management, Dowling Donuts doing business as Dunkin' Donuts, located at 128 Dowling Highway, extended hours license. Dan's Management, Slate Donuts, doing business as Dunkin' Donuts, located at 941 Victory Highway, extended hours license. White House Pizza Shop 2, located at 639 Great Road. Hercules and Family Inc., doing business as Hercules Beef, Wings, and Pizza, located at 7 Main Street. Quick Stop Deli, located at 11 Main Street. Rustic Acquisition LLC, doing business as Rustic Drive You Drive-In, located at 1195 Eddie Highway, Theater License. Stop and Shop Supermarket Company, LLC, doing business as Stop and Shop Supermarket, number 721, 
located at 595 Smithfield Road, Subway located at 99 Eddie Bowman Highway, GM Foods Inc. doing business as Subway located at 960 Highway, LM Taco RI Inc. slash DV3 LLC doing business as Taco Bell located at 2 Dallas Village Boulevard, extended hours. Walmart stores East LLP doing business as Walmart number 2225 located at 120 Eddie Bowman Highway. Wendy's Properties LLC, the Wendy's Company doing business as Wendy's located at 77 Eddie Bowman Highway. Grace Dairy Farm Inc. doing business as Grace Dairy Farm and Bakery located at 200 Monsacchio Road. CNL NS LLC doing business at Denny's, number 8781, located at 44 Dallas Village Boulevard, extended hours license. The N Group LLC doing business at Domino's, located at 950 Highway. Rise Up Nutrition and Allen, located at 950 Highway. Trinity Management Company LLC doing business at McDonald's, located at 12 Dallas Village Highway, excuse me, Eddie Dowling Highway, extended hours license. We have a motion to approve those 15 licenses. Mr. President, motion to approve the victuating license subject to payment of town taxes, approval from the Department of Health and Fire Inspection. Motion by Mrs. Zelensky, there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. O'Hara. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelensky? Yes. Mr. Vadnik? Yes. Holiday licenses, all licenses are subject to payment of town taxes and fire inspection approval. Augusto Inc. doing business as Vigilos Fresh Market located at 900 Victory Highway. Aldi located at 11 Dowling Village Boulevard. Branch Village Pool and Spa Needs located at 643 Great Road. For Helen CVS Pharmacy LLC doing business as CVS Pharmacy number 326 located at 120A Dowling Highway. One Case Depot LLC doing business as Solaris. Located at 7 Dallas Village Boulevard. General Nutrition Corp doing business as GNC number 3607, located at 23C Dallas Village Boulevard. KB Nails located at 645 Great Road. Cole's Department Stores doing business as Cole number 1549, located at 35 Dallas Village Boulevard. Leeway Inc. doing business as Leeway Ace Hunter, located at 790 Great Road. Great Road General Inc. doing business at Little General Store located at 659 Great Road. Rolls Home Improvement Centers LLC doing business at Momo Flows Home Center number 273 located at 19 Dallas Village Boulevard. Mattress Firm Inc. doing business as Mattress Firm number 170010 located at 23 Dallas Village Boulevard. Minnesota Regis Corp doing business as Smart Style number 3972, located at 7 Down Village Boulevard. Pearls Candy and Nuts, located at 4 Eddie Dunning Highway. DV7 LLC doing business as Pet Smart number 2359, located at 15 Down Village Boulevard. Phantom Fireworks Eastern Region LLC doing business as Phantom Fireworks, located at 886 Eddie Dunning Highway. Redbox Automated Retail LLC doing business at Redbox located at 7 Eddie Dowling Highway, 120 Eddie Dowling Highway, and 595 Smithfield Road. Show Nails and Spa located at 23D Dowling Village Boulevard. The Ski Shop Plus located at 859 Eddie Dowling Highway. Stop and Shop Supermarket Company LLC doing business at Stop and Shop Fuel Facility number 721 located at 35 Eddie Dowling Highway. U-Haul Company of Rhode Island doing business as U-Haul Center of Los Smithfield, located at 408 Eddie Dowling Highway. Classic Village Jewelers and Gifts Inc. located at 638A Great Road. Harris Brothers Inc. doing business as Sam's Food Store, located at 948 Eddie Dowling Highway. And Walgreens Eastern Company Inc. doing business as Walgreens, number 19165, located at 900 Victory Highway. For the following. License and holiday licenses, there are motion to approve. Motion to approve is present subject to payment of taxes, town taxes, and fire inspection. Motion by Mrs. Zelensky, there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. O'Hara. Any discussion? There is none. Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. 
Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zulinski? Yes. Mr. Radnick? Yes. Miscellaneous licenses, all licenses are subject to payment of town taxes and fire inspection approval. Bernard's Auto Parts Inc. located at 1115 IMI Road, Junk License. Northern Flea Market located at 1260 A Dowling Highway, Flea Market License. Cozy Quarters Pet in Inc. located at 89 Old Sales Hill Road, Ford Cats and Dogs. Travelers Motor Lodge located at 1210 A Dowling Highway, Hotel Moto License. High on a Hill Boarding Kennel, located at 836 Old Smithfield Road, Ford Cats and Dogs. Jalbron LLC, doing business at Hill Pop Inn, located at 797 Dowling Highway, Hotel Motel License. C&B Scrap, doing business at Leo's Auto Parts, located at 955 Iron Line Road, Junk Out License. Lulu's Crazy Daisy LLC, located at 706 St. Paul Street, Second Hand License. Northeast Auto Recycling Inc. located at 16 Canal Street, Junk Out License. North Smithfield Auto Recycling located at 1859 Hill Road, Junk Out License. KMD Hockey LLC doing business at the Island Sports Center located at 1186 Dowling Highway, Skate Rink and Coin Off License. Personal Touch Cleaners located at 475 Eddie Dowling Highway, Dry Cleaners License. TDM Enterprise, Avalon Entertainment, LLC, doing business as Gators Pub, located at 1306 Victory Highway, Point Out License, and PBW, located at 197 Rocky Hill Road, second hand license. Very motion to approve the miscellaneous licenses. Motion to approve the inspection of the payment of town taxes and fire inspection approval. Motion by Mrs. Lindsay, there a second. Second. Second by Mrs. Bonner, and this is all handled. Any discussion? Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelinsky? Yes. Mr. Vadney? Yes. Okay. I'd just like to thank everybody, but I've had the opportunity to work with this town council, past council, 16 years. I've appreciated it. I've grown. I've learned. If you allow me to, Mr. President, I'd like to make my last motion. Motion to adjourn. Motion <laughs> <laughs> by Mrs. Walensky. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Walensky. Wow, you're old. That was in front of us. And for me, I want to thank, I want to thank people like Mr. Yudovsky, the members of his board, for taking the time to serve the town. Not everyone, not everyone does. A lot of people complain. We all know it's not easy. You can do it, though. Um, you know, people complain. We all know it's not easy. You can do it, though. Even those that ran, that ran the selection, you can get in, you can put your name on the line. I get a lot of credit for doing that. But for those that have served with me, I thank you for, for your time and your effort. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Bartomioli? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelinsky? Yes. Mr. Vadnay? Yes. No, it might be a, a meeting.